Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. I just got in a uh, new purchase I got from Amazon and it's a high definition trail cam. Alright, so it actually didn't pick up anything on there other than me, which I was a little surprised by that. And so what I did is I moved it to my pond where I have a ring camera set up and therefore I know I have some other camera that I can verify if something moved. And this trail cam, it picked up the a deer that went by there, uh, but there were um, at least two passings of a raccoon that went in front of the camera and it did not pick that up. And you know, in the past, my experience with cameras has been they're too sensitive if I put them on the high setting for sensitivity where they pick up the leaves moving, you know, a bird flying by, you know, a squirrel hopping around. So I was a little disappointed that this one doesn't seem to be as sensitive as other cameras. Every time I walk past it or, you know, the deer walk past it, it did detect it. Um, and I have the sensitivity set on high. So that's the one downside I've seen to this camera is it doesn't seem to catch up uh, smaller uh, animals and you know it could be perhaps that the sensors don't point down and I might need to put the camera lower you know I had it you know I don't know four to five feet high off the ground uh, which is where I typically do it but uh, perhaps it needs to be pointed lower what I will say is I do like the size of it I you know the app is not um, you know feature packed or anything but it does function it lets you see the the um, the camera image live so you can set it up it allows you to download the full res um, pictures and videos without having to uh, put them um, on you know, an SD card, bring it home and put it on a laptop or a computer to download. So that's all nice. Let me show you the videos of the deer going past and I'll show you both from this trail cam as well as my ring cam and then I'll also show you the ring videos of the raccoon going in front of the camera and I have no uh, video or pictures from the trail cam for that. Got uh, lots of property here, and uh, obviously a lot of animals out there. I have an old trail cam. Um, I'm probably close to 10 years old, so it's low quality, and it doesn't have any, um, you know, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connections. This one, I'm going to open it up, show you how to set it up, and I'm going to put it to use, and I'll show footage as well as what I think of it after I have a couple days of. Um, of testing out and seeing how it works. So I'll include all that in the same video here. All 
Alright, so this is from company XTU and um, they call it the Wi-Fi Remote Control Trail Cam. So it has Wi-Fi and I did read up on it so it, the Wi-Fi doesn't actually, you know, you don't need the Wi-Fi to connect to your home internet. So this can be out in the woods in the middle of nowhere. The Wi-Fi is really just to talk to your phone. Uh, so the nice thing about that is that you can have it uh, up in a tree or a hard to get place and you don't actually have to go and touch it um, to get the footage off of it. You should be able to see it all through the app. So I'm going to test that out and see how it goes and I'll, uh, I'll show that to you. So in this box here we have um, owner's manual, some warranty information. Alright, so and then in here we have a couple different mounting styles. One is a screw on one that obviously would be for like a flat surface and obviously more of a permanent. Here's a little watch device. I'll have to learn exactly what you do with this, but it has an on off switch and supposedly you can uh, I guess activate the Wi Fi. So I'm assuming this is Bluetooth to the um, camera and then that activates Wi Fi. Obviously, anything battery powered uh, Wi Fi does take up. Um, battery so it goes into like a sleep mode all right so this is actually kind of nice so this is actually a um, a ball mount all right so the nice thing about this mount uh, it is metal and then it's got uh, balls on both sides down there not quite um, you know fully articulate they don't articulate much left to right but they do um, go over um, 270 degrees that way so this one end screws into um, here and the other one into the camera and that would allow you to mount it on a fixed surface and then it has the more typical, at least what I'm used to, uh, a strap that goes around the tree and make it camouflage green. So now one thing I will say, it does not look like it has a uh, standard buckle. It's the, um, yeah, it's a little quick quick tab type, um, which isn't bad. Uh, my other one does have a, um, you know, an actual buckle that you can unbuckle, which uh, I'm not sure if that really is a big advantage or not out there. Cause I always have to adjust it. Uh, in the end, doesn't matter every time I put it on, on a tree. And then the next thing it has is a little, so this is USB A to um, micro, sorry, to mini. So that's the old school mini connector. All right. So now for the camera itself. So that's the other beauty of these newer ones is they're so much smaller than my old ones. So here's where the, the mount uh, is on the actual unit itself. It's on the bottom of it and towards the back, just to give you an idea. So that's where this guy goes. And you have the strap that can go through there and it looks like it has little, um, you know, knurlings to try to grab that tree to keep it from slipping left to right. All right. Okay, so that's kind of interesting, just the bottom. Well, that's the other, thing that I did like about this. All right, so it does come with a SD card, which is kind of nice. It is a 32 gigabyte SD card, which should be plenty of um, space for this for many days of um, recording. It is off-brand, but obviously if it comes with it, I would assume that it's good enough to work in here. Now, of interesting note, I see there's lots of little plastic film on all these sensors. So it has like infrared sensors or, um, and the the actual lens of the camera and the lights. So I'm sure you want to take these off before you use it because they might interfere with motion detection or the um, flash and the IR lights and that kind of stuff. So they're hard to see and they do have a little tab but it's hard to get them. I was just trying to figure out how you get the batteries in this thing and this little lever here is actually how you do it. So you press that 
and then this tray kind of pops out. It does have a, it kind of gets stuck a little bit. They even mentioned that in the um, instructions. So obviously it, you just pull on a little bit harder and it pops out. I think there's a little um, um, flashing actually from the molding process and that creates a little catch. But anyway, so this comes out and this will allow you to now put your um, AA batteries into it. So it takes eight AA batteries. So let me get those and uh, put those in here. All right, so I got the batteries now. So we'll pop these guys out. Okay, so the uh, interesting note here, there is a um, a plug here that gives you a um, external power supply source. It looks like it's a DC six volt source, and it even has a little weatherproof port so that this case can be closed and you can still power it from the bottom of the unit. Now they do not include that power adapter, but uh, you know if you had a battery bank or something like a rechargeable lithium ion one that you like to use, uh, it looks like there is a way to power this without using up the AA batteries. This camera has lots of the standard options um, that most of them do where they can do pictures, they can do videos, you can set how sensitive it is, you can set how long the video recording is, how long the, it waits until it triggers the motion event again, all that kind of stuff. So there's just a selector switch here that I will switch from off to setup. And now it's going to power on. It's actually looking at me. So, and then it also has the the settings or the resolution for the camera and the video. So right now it shows 1080p. This is how it starts up. It just shows you um, yourself and up here it has the resolution SD cards in there. And then you go to the mode button and it shows the camera icon and it's a 16 megabit photo. And then if I had any files on here, it would show them here and it would play them. And then there's the settings. So here I can go down and I can select how big of a setting I want. It does up to a 24. Um, I mean, these are pretty big, but uh, I'll just do 20 for now. And then I always like to grab a couple pictures. I'd rather have more pictures of a little bit lower quality than, uh, than more so. Yeah, this uh, 1296 piece kind of interesting because of the shape of it. It's, uh, I had to do that math, but that's not, that's like a four by three. This uh, 1080p is the standard um, 19 to six ratio that uh, you know, I'm used to with a TV or phone. All right, video length is five seconds. I certainly want more than five seconds. Um, I'll do 15. Right, let's see how far, you can go a lot farther. Okay, so it looks like you can do 180 seconds. So that's three minutes, but we'll just do that. Here's the PIR interval. So it does every 30 seconds. Sensitivity, medium, time-lapse off. Well, that's kind of interesting. So time lapse, this could set up and just take a picture every uh, so um, many seconds, and then you play it back, and it's a time lapse of whatever it's looking at. So it's kind of interesting that it, that it has that feature. Go ahead and set the date here. that's all the settings all right so for the app I'm going to go to the Google Play Store because I have an Android device and I type in hunting cam pro I 
Alright, so we'll let that come on and it tells you how to turn on the Wi-Fi. Press and hold the up button three seconds. Alright, so let's wake this guy up here. So I'm in settings. It says press and hold the up button for three seconds. to manually go in there and actually connect to the Wi-Fi. It doesn't do it automatically. At least they make it an easy password. Okay, so now that's connected. Let's go back to the app. Newer phones never like the uh, direct connection, so I can go here to the camera. Let's just see what it does here. Cool. So yeah, so it shows you a live view. Of course, it's slightly delayed, but it gives you the temperature in there. And that's good. So that appears to work, and then you can manually click it on and off. It tells you battery life. Um, so let's go back. Here, you know, if I had any pictures on there, it would, they would obviously show up here. So this is kind of the neat thing is you can walk up to this device. Like I say, you can also use this watch to press on. And that will kick your Wi-Fi on and then you can take your phone and you can look at your pictures. You don't have to, I always had to take my SD card back, back inside, check and see what pictures I got on, on it. And uh, now I can just do that right here um, at, in the woods without having to take the SD card back home. All right, and then settings. So, looks like there's no settings other than the clear the cache. So, I think that's pretty much all there is to it. There's not a whole lot in the setup phase. So that, that was pretty quick and easy. So now what I'll do is I'll get this guy outside and get it uh, strapped up to a tree. And then that way I can uh, see how good of detection it has, as well as how good of video and photo quality it has. All right, so this here's a little nature trail and nature path that I built. Got a video of it actually up on my channel, but uh, I'm gonna set this little camera up here on this fairly small tree. I think I can make it work though. Okay, so now there's two ways you can see the, um, the point of view that's out there. Obviously, there's three motion sensors here. And if you're in setup mode, it will actually... Let me go to that setup mode for you. I'll just mention this little screen is actually pretty nice. Um, it uh, is pretty good quality there, so you can see well. But um, in setup mode, if you um, move, you see these, this light? That tells you that it's detecting motion. So you can kind of, you, feel, you can check and see where um, it's detecting the motion. Um, so you kind of have an idea. For me, it's pretty easy because it's a pretty open area. But otherwise, you could be in here and when you move, it will tell you if it's picking up your, um, your motion. So here's, I can see my point of view. I can see it's pretty good. And then, I can change the settings there. I can also go on the app and I can see the point of view on my phone, which might be useful if you want to walk um, someplace you can see it live on your phone where it's going. So I'll show you how I, I can do that real fast. You can either use um, this button here or you can, um, you can press and hold the up button or you can press um, this watch that will turn it on you'll see these lights flash and it tells you to connect to your Wi-Fi so it's doing that now I will go into all right so now I'll go into my app the hunting cam pro app and I just click camera and now it's showing a live shot of this so I can move wherever I want And then I can verify that I like this um, this setup. 
I can also click on the uh, the photos and videos. I think it takes it a second to um, to download them, but it should they should be on here. So let's see why it's not uh, not showing to me. Maybe I'll go in here and then I'll click this one. See if that does anything. Okay, yeah, so I clicked that one. And you can just see it has me messing around with the camera earlier. So you can click on these and see this is a picture. And you can swipe. You can also download these. You can hit that little um, download button on the, on the left bottom. And then that will download that picture to your phone. And you don't even have to bring it inside to a computer to get the full res version of it. If I switch over here to video, I can also get the video. You can see how long um the video is and what it has and you can view this so that's just me talking to the camera it was capturing me at a different location okay so let's leave it here and see what it catches